You ask the questions. We'll provide the answers. Sack and Stone Team Show, episode number five. five. Since 1988, I have had one passion only. That is to exceed customer expectations in every facet of the real estate transaction. Our attention to detail and negotiating skills make us the most sought after realtors in our marketplace. Real estate is an industry that's now technologically driven. We at the Sack and Stone Team will always be cutting edge. Hey, what's going on? It's Lane Stone and Scott Sacken with the Sack and Stone Team, Sack and Stone Team show episode number five. Five. Here we go. Okay, so what we're thinking about doing is every epi- every five episodes, so 5, right 10, 15, 20, we're going to do a Q&A. So uh, I don't know if you remember a while back on social media, we asked for you guys to send in the questions. Thank you for doing so. We have a few of them here and we're going to go over them. But if your question wasn't answered or you do have a question, please still contact us on all of our social media channels and we'll make sure that those questions are featured in upcoming Q&A episodes. Absolutely. Are you ready to go? I'm ready to go. Okay. Fire away. So this first one came from Instagram. It says, is it better to price low and have a bidding war or price it higher and come down if needed? That's a great question, and I think it has to do with the dynamics of the marketplace. Right now, when we have a very high demand and a low supply, and even with a little bit of a correction we've seen recently, we still have that dynamic going on. And we found that by pricing close to where the market is, we just heighten that demand. And when you can have multiple people that are wanting the same product, you're going to get a couple people that will rise to the top and hit that emotional box and be willing to pay a little bit over market value even when it comes right down to them getting the house or losing out. Sure, and regardless, wherever you price your home, it's gonna sell for whatever it's worth. That's what we always say. The value of your home is whatever a buyer's willing to pay. And the seller's willing to take, of course. The seller always has final say to sign on the dotted line. And we've had times where we've listed below on purpose to start a bidding war, and it's been, it got sold for over $100,000 more than what we were asking. So just because you're listing it low doesn't mean that that's what it's gonna sell for. And same thing, just because you listed a little bit higher doesn't mean it's what it's gonna sell for either. And it's very very situational. We have a lot of people that come to us saying that they need to sell quickly. And so that bidding war strategy is probably better and more suited for them because they're going to get a good value in a quicker amount of time. But then we also have uh, sellers that come to us and it's just in their bones and in their like nature that they want to feel like DNA. That, that they did not leave any money on the table. Right. So. And I think to Lane's point, we do have some clients that are like that. But what we do is we have a strategy in place and a segmented system so that we don't just price high and then 60 days later, they're languishing on the market and saying, oh, my goodness, what's happened and have to take a drastic reduction. If we are going to push the boundaries a little bit, we have a strategy in place for adjustments at appropriate times to make sure we stay current, correct? That's correct, that's correct. So it's all about a win-win for the client and there's no set strategy that works, but we're here to make sure we pick the right one for you. So that was a great first question, thank you so much. Um, Okay, let's go with question number two. This question also comes from Instagram. Mai is actually a really great past client of ours. Hi Mai. Hey Mai, thanks for the question. Um, Mai asked, is it always a good time to sell while prices are up? Well, I'll feel that one first, too, Lane. Okay. Again, having been the old guy with 30 years in the business, uh, my chosen career, what I've really told people is it's about the story of your life. And you want to be selling or making these important decisions based on how the next chapter of your life is going to go. Like Warren Buffett says, don't try to time the market. Time your life. Nine times out of 10 or even more than that, I found my clients always do come out in the right place. And the ones that I've had say, well, I'm going to wait till this time to move, whether it's looking for a, you know, a down market to buy or an up market to sell, invariably, they look in the hindsight rearview mirror and say they've made the wrong move. That's my experience. Sure, and, and nobody really has a crystal ball. So, you know, how do you, uh, timing the peak is really a tough time. If it feels high and you know that you you want to sell and you want to move on to something else, then maybe if it feels right for you then to sell. But just because you feel like it, it, there's a crash coming, you know, that you don't necessarily have to sell because if you're planning on staying in your home for five, eight, ten years or longer, and you have a stable job, stay stay in the home. You're still going to build equity again towards your Correct. home. The, the value is going to come back historically in the history of real estate. The complete history of real estate always has come back and then some. And then some. That's right. After every setback, we've always seen the return is higher than the last than the last high. Absolutely. So thank you, Mike, for the question. Let's go with. Uh, oh, this question came from Facebook, and it uh, should I avoid putting my home on the market during the holidays and just wait for the spring? You know what, Lane, you're reading all the questions, but I'll let you field this one first. Sure. Um, Yeah, a lot of times uh, clients do come to us and they ask that they want to wait until the spring to sell, but that might not always be the case. We've seen that um, just as many sellers 
that might not be selling during the holidays, the same uh, ratio of buyers that might not be buying during the holidays either. It's still, it's relatively the same. But the buyers that are looking during the holiday season, they're going to be your more serious buyers. There's a reason why they're looking. Um, so exactly. I, I'm, always, I'm also thinking, you know, a lot of times people want to sell during that spring selling season is because they say kids are out of school during the summer. Well, kids are out of school during the winter time too. That's and, right. And there's a reason why these families are looking to buy it when kids are out of school. So uh, it, it's, it's very situational. Again, I hate to say it depends, but it, de it, it depends. So. Yeah. No, and I agree 100% with what Lane's saying. And one thing that we have here in Southern California is our market doesn't change because of the weather. So much of this question, I think, comes from the east and the north because weather dictates the ability to go see houses. It, it dictates so much when they're snowed in for you know months at a time in Detroit and Buffalo, New York. It's a pain in the butt to go out and look at houses, and it's and we don't we don't deal with that here. So. I've seen also, again, not to be the old guy in the room, but I got my license a week before Thanksgiving in 1988 and before Christmas had sold three homes. There were people that were looking. My third home was sold on Christmas Eve. And what I found is you have the same ratio of people that, as Lane says, are serious at the holidays that are buyers and sellers. So even though we may have fewer buyers and fewer sellers, the ratios stay the same. So the dynamic and the marketplace is very, very vibrant. And homes tend to look better at the, market, at the holidays. And buyers have a little more time off. They're generally in a better mood and they have time to look at the homes and, and they're not as frenzied and so forth. So again, depending on the timing and the mindset and the circumstance of the individuals, it can be a great time. And I think my final answer on that is, there's no bad time in Southern California to be buying or selling. Again, it depends on when is the right time for you based on your life circumstances. And, and the one thing that we also do, and it should be, we should do this every time regardless of what time you're selling, is we do a snapshot in time of how many active sellers are out there versus how many active buyers. Correct. So at, at different price points too. So if you're in the holidays and there are more active buyers than there are active sellers, why would you wait for the spring and risk for more sellers to put their home on the market? Why wouldn't you take advantage of the opportunity for a higher demand? So when, if you, if and when you know that you want to sell and it's during the holiday time, take advantage of professional help and we'll be able to tell you, hey, yes. it's, a, it's a good time. There's more buyers out there than there are sellers. So to go ahead and sell during the holidays, it's, it's probably better for your situation. Right on. And I just want to close on this topic with such an important factor is, why would we want to be part of the pack when so many people, their mentality is let's just wait till spring and then you're just one of the pack of a multitude of properties on the market. Wouldn't you rather be a shining example in a smaller pool? That to me is the different and better way to go like we always espouse. And we're going to have a whole episode in the future dedicated just to selling in the holidays and some of the myths about it. So stay tuned for that one as well. Awesome. Okay. So the final question here also comes from Facebook. Um, how do you know if a home needs to be staged? Okay, I'm going to take that and just start really briefly and say every home needs to be styled. <laughs> Not necessarily staged, but styled. And we find there's different levels of that from a very brief edit to a complete makeover. And I'll let Lane kind of go from that. But I'm going to say I'm adamant these days when 90 some percent of the people are going to see the home online first and often just a little picture on a cell phone, we've got to create a fantastic first impression first visually. And every home, again, is situational. It's different. I always say, we always say, you know, situational here for this episode. But uh, what, we have vacant homes that need a full staging or a conceptual staging. We have homes that are already look like model homes, but we still think that it's good to get an interior designer eye in there to be able to say, hey, you know what? Maybe some of the family photos need to come off the wall, yes. depersonalize it. Every, every home has at least something, even if it is a model home, even if it does look like a yeah. model home. And it's worth it, especially since it's going to be one of your biggest assets, if not your biggest asset, to have an interior design eye take a look at it. So that way it's properly exposed. The photos show well. It looks really well online because 94% of buyers look at the home online. Exactly. And right, so right. why wouldn't you have it looking absolutely yeah. perfect? And we want to make sure, because that's how we work, that your home does look absolutely perfect. It's got to look perfect. And then I think in closing with regards to this, we have to remember we're providing the home as a commodity. We're looking for buyers. We want people to fall in love with this property, this home, feel like they can make it their own. That's what styling and staging does. It depersonalizes just a little bit and then it allows the consumer or the buyer, if you will, to picture themselves in the house, whether it's just a room or a kitchen vignette or whatever. We want them to feel like this could be something they could live in. Absolutely. 
So thank you for listening to our answers to your questions. Thank you for your questions. As a reminder, again, please send in more, uh, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. We're going to be answering all of your questions every five episodes. So episode number 10 in the future, it's going to be another Q&A session. Thanks so much. And we love your criticisms, your critiques, your kudos, whatever. This is all about you. Thank you. At the Sack and Stone team, our clients are always number one. Get in touch with us with a call, text, or email, and stay in touch. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube.